What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode. Coach Joe here with Heartletics.com, and I'm really excited to dive into today's presentation because we're going to be going over a complete overview from start to finish on metabolism. And most importantly, we're going to be going over some key traits here on how if you have a slow metabolism, what you should be doing in order to repair it and make it faster again. So that way you can continue on your fat loss journey. Let's dive in. My job is to make this very easy to understand how your metabolism works and most importantly, what is the best thing that you can do in order to repair your metabolism so that way you can lose more body fat. Now, three key things that we're going to be going over in today's presentation is one, how your metabolism works and most importantly, the key things to understand when it comes to losing body fat. The second thing is symptoms of having a slow metabolism. And the third and final thing is going over how to repair your metabolism so that way you can make sure that it's efficient and helping you lose more weight. To give you the long story short summary on how metabolism works, it's very simple. You are consuming in food, right? You're consuming in calories. The calories are broken up into different macronutrients and micronutrients. So your proteins, your carbs, your fats, there's vitamins, there's minerals, etc. Your body's utilizing, right? all the food that you're consuming, the energy that's coming into you, it's utilizing it to produce more energy, to have more energy. Now you may be wondering, well that's great, I can eat more food, I can have way more energy, but why am I maybe overweight? Why do I look and feel this type of way where I actually don't have any energy at all? Well, I want you to think about this. If you were, let's say for the past several years, maybe five, 10, 15, 20 years, who knows, right? But if you're consuming all of this you know, energy in the form of calories, but you're not utilizing those calories, right? You're just kind of sitting there, you're absorbing it. Eventually, your body's gonna understand that, hey, maybe we don't really need to produce as much energy. So now, as you're consuming that food, your body's actually storing it as body fat rather than actually producing it as energy because maybe a sedentary lifestyle, bad habits, whatever the case may be. It's just trained in a way where, hey, we're not very active, we don't need to produce a lot of energy, so it's best if we don't really need a fast metabolism because we're not in this rush of burning and utilizing all these calories that we're consuming, so we're just gonna store onto it. So once again, hopefully that makes sense. It should be very simple. If you take a look at this image right here, this is called your TDEE, which stands for your Total Daily Energy Expenditure. And this is compiled of all the different things when it comes to utilizing energy and burning more calories within the body, whether it's from exercise or whether it's just from your body itself. And you can see here that your RMR, your resting metabolic rate, this is your biggest bane for your buck. So much so when it comes to, you know, once again, burning more calories throughout the course of the day. And your RMR, this is, you know, your organs, this is your muscles, and we'll go into more examples about that here in a second. Next up is the thermic effect of food. So this is simply mean that the calories that we're consuming, right, the food, the proteins, the carbs, the fats, etc., our body has to digest that. And as it's going through that process, right, it's actually burning calories. And you'll be shocked here, and I'll go over some specifics here in a little bit, that certain foods can actually help you lose more body fat and help you when it comes to speed up your metabolism. Next up, we have NEAT, which stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. And this is probably by far one of the easiest and most favorable fat loss habits at Heartletics that we go over with our members. And it's simply to just be more active. That's it. Whether it's giving yourself a step goal, whether it's doing the dishes, playing with your kids, playing with the dog, whatever the case may be, you're just not being so sedentary. And there's so many great health benefits to just moving more. And um, when it comes to the need itself, right, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis and moving a lot more, guess what? It's gonna help you with also speeding up your metabolic rate. And at the very top, we have exercise. And so you can see here from the TDEE, right, the total daily energy expenditure, exercise, you're not really burning a lot of calories compared to, let's say, your resting metabolic rate, right, with how efficient that is when it has the biggest bang for your buck when it comes to utilizing more energy. No, exercise, you actually burn 
very little calories. Now you might think you are if let's say you're huffing and puffing and have you know sweat dripping down your face in the middle of your intense workout, it still doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be burning as many calories as some other key factors here. Now remember, your RMR, your resting metabolic rate, has the biggest factor when it comes to utilizing the most amount of energy. And you can see in here, your brain, your liver, the digestion, right? Even body fat, kidneys, muscle, your heart, everything like that has a huge factor when it comes to utilizing more calories. Now, one key thing that I wanna point out here is that you can see that muscles equate to 20% and body fat only 3%. I bet you anything that if you focus on doing more strength training, right, and focused on better eating habits when it comes to helping you have more lean muscle tissue on your body, that's gonna help you increase and speed up your RMR. And just to give you a quick overview of the thermic effect of food. So remember, the calories that we're consuming, they're broken up into different macronutrients, which stands for your proteins, your carbs, and your fats. Well, at the end of the day, those different macronutrients, they all require a certain amount of energy for us to you know, break up the food groups and digest it properly. Fats only equate to about zero to 3% energy. Carbs, five to 10% energy. Protein being anywhere from 20 to 30%. So you can see, just by looking at this chart right here, just by you consuming more protein is gonna be helping you burn more calories. Now, over the last several years, we've literally helped out thousands of people when it comes to losing more body fat, speeding up their metabolism. What we've really found out is that there are six key traits when it comes to identifying if somebody has a slow metabolism or not. The first one is that they have a hard time hitting their nutrition goals. So let's just say, for example, you're 250 pounds. And uh, let's just say that you should be having maybe... 2,200 calories and 200 grams of protein. We'll use that for example. And let's just say that this individual has a very hard time eating that many calories or has a hard time hitting that many grams of protein. They feel stuffed, they feel bloated, they feel like just, nah, man, this is so much food, I'm just shoveling it down my throat, like I'm having a hard time hitting these goals. That right there is a very, very big sign that you have a slow metabolism. The second is that you're having a hard time with losing body fat. So let's say you're doing all the right things with your nutrition, and let's say you're doing all the right things with your training, but at the end of the day, everything that you're doing, you're not seeing the ROI. You're not seeing any results. You're not seeing any changes at all. Who knows? Maybe you're dealing with having a slow metabolism or you're in this metabolic stall. The third is food cravings, and hear me out. If you're somebody that, let's say, doesn't really have a type of an appetite throughout the course of the day, but when you get off work, you can just you know eat everything in sight, and then right afterwards, you still want you know either the sweets or you know the savory foods, whatever the case may be, where you're still having these food cravings. That right there is a big sign that you have a slow metabolism. The fourth being low energy. If you find yourself just waking up and you're tired all throughout the course of the day. 2 p.m. hits at work and you need some coffee or energy drink just to keep you up. And as soon as you get home, you feel like just sitting on the couch watching TV and you're not even devoting enough time to your family and your kids and you just feel like just going to sleep. Odds are, who knows? You might be struggling with having a slow metabolism. The fifth sign of having a slow metabolism is high body fat. If you're over 30% body fat, I would highly recommend that you start to prioritize making a change. You know, you're dealing with a lot of um, health factors, right? And it's kind of like your back's up against the wall because the older you get, the harder it gets as well. So I highly recommend start making a change because some of these health concerns are very serious. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, type two diabetes, uh, heart disease, strokes, you know, uh, different aspects of this where, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be hard at all. And I know at times it might seem discouraging, but hear me out. Slow and steady wins the race. As long as you're doing something that's sustainable for you and your lifestyle and it's on the right path of helping you reach your goals, it can be very simple and actually easy to lose body fat and, you know, most importantly, speed up your metabolism. And the sixth and last sign of having a slow metabolism is somebody that is constantly lacking drive and motivation. If you find yourself just waking up each and every day and it feels like it's Groundhog's Day or Hey, if you're somebody that constantly says, 
I'm going to get started on Monday or I'm going to get started after the holidays. But that time eventually comes and there you are making up another excuse as to why you can't get started. Who knows? You might be just struggling with, you know, having a slow metabolism because there's no drive. There's no motivation. There's no willpower. There's no urgency for you to want to make a change. So let's go over some key things on what we can do to help you repair your metabolism. So that way, guess what? You can start losing more body fat. You can start having more energy. You can start having more confidence. And most importantly, start just improving your overall health and being that inspiration for others out there as well. The first tip is to move your body more. Now remember that image where I went over the TDEE, the total daily energy expenditure? Well, just keep in mind that the NEAT, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis, just moving your body more has a big factor when it comes to just overall utilizing more calories, overall burning and utilizing more energy, so to speak. So if you wanna learn how to have a faster metabolism, Start with the simple things. Give yourself, let's say, a daily step goal, or who knows, maybe just something easy and convenient that you know that you can constantly do each and every day, but hear me out. You're moving your body doing that. You're not being sedentary. You're not sitting down, okay? That's the name of the game when it comes to having this healthy and overall better lifestyle for yourself is to move more. The second tip is strength training. So remember before, I talked about how exercise, you're not necessarily utilizing and burning the most amount of calories when you're doing that. But hear me out. When you're doing strength training, you're going to be putting on and utilizing more muscle. And that's overall what you want. Because the more muscle that you have, that's going to help your RMR, your resting metabolic rates. So if you're able to improve on that, it's going to help you out overall when it comes to losing more body fat. Think about it like this. If you had somebody that is 200 pounds and they're 30% body fat, okay, so they have the man boobs, the, the beer belly, right, like all these health concerns wrong with them, and they're just sedentary, they're just sitting there all day long, and then you have somebody that let's say is the same age, right, same weight also, because that makes a big difference, they're 200 pounds, same exact weight, but this person is 10% body fat, chiseled chest, six pack abs, and they're sitting there all day long as well. They're both just sitting there. Who do you think is going to burn more calories throughout the course of the day, even though they don't move at all? Somebody that is 30% body fat or somebody that is 10% body fat? Obviously, somebody that's 10% body fat. So the strength training, that's what's going to help you put on more of that lean muscle tissue. And once again, that's going to help you speed up and repair your metabolic rate. The third tip is to focus on hitting your nutritional goals. And I know at times, right, especially in the very beginning stages, if you have a slow metabolism, that's hard to do, right? Consuming the right amount of calories for your body type to lose body fat effectively, if you're not used to eating that much, that could be very hard to do. Same thing when it comes to hitting your protein goal. If you're somebody that's not used to consuming lots of protein, and here you are taking your body weight and multiplying it by 0.8. That's gonna give you the bare minimum of protein that we recommend you should be consuming. If you're having a hard time hitting those goals, I understand it could be very frustrating and discouraging also, but consistency is key. Let me say that one more time. Consistency is key. Try your best to hit your protein goal. Try your best to stake within that calorie range that suits you best when it comes to losing more body fat and understand that metabolic adaptation can last anywhere from three to about six weeks per individual because obviously everybody's different. But what does that mean? That means, hey, give it some time. Give it some patience. You know, Your metabolism didn't just slow down over the course of a few days or a few weeks. So in order to speed it back up and repair it efficiently, we should also make sure we give it plenty of time. And remember, patience is the name of the game for anything that we do in life. So focus your best on sticking within that calorie range, focus your best on hitting your protein goal, and just remember, consistency is key. Don't give up way too soon, give it some time, and your body is gonna eventually start seeing more results. You're gonna start noticing that, hey, I'm actually feeling a lot you know, hungrier, faster, to where at one point, it was actually hard hitting those calories, it was actually hard hitting that protein goal. Now you're starving, now you're hungry all day long. That right there 
is one of the fastest signs that you'll see and actually truly understand about yourself and how your body's changing as you go through this transformation that your metabolism is speeding up and it's in the right direction. The fourth tip is to consume more water. At the end of the day, your body is over what, 65% water anyways. There's so many different health benefits when it comes to consuming more water. And that's why at Heartletics, we focus on just these easy habits, right? Like hitting your protein goal, you know, getting more steps in, uh, focusing on drinking more water, getting plenty of sleep. And when you focus on different aspects of this, this is what makes it easy. This is what truly makes it sustainable. So with your body type, consume more water. And as sure enough, right, bet you anything, your metabolism is gonna start speeding in the right direction. And most importantly, you're probably gonna start losing more body fat as well. You probably start gonna feeling more energized as well. You're probably most importantly gonna start seeing way more health benefits by just simply consuming more water. And the fifth and final tip is to make sure that you're sleeping more. You know, they did a study. Guys that slept on average eight hours compared to five hours had up to 20% more natural free testosterone. Obviously, as guys, right, more testosterone, more muscle. So we obviously want that. But, you know, hear me out. You could be doing all the right things under the sun. You could be hitting your nutritional goals. You could be, you know, training hard and effectively and doing all the right things, right? Drinking plenty of water, etc. But if you're not prioritizing your sleep and your recovery, at the end of the day, you're never going to see the results that you're truly after. The recovery aspect is huge and it matters so much because if your body's not recovering properly, you're going to be underneath all this stress. Well, high amounts of stress, right? Whether that's stress at home, whether that's stress at work, whether that's stress because you're not recovering your body properly and you're not taking care of it, you're not resting and relaxing. You know, it's like, think about a battery. If you're constantly, you know, uh, pouring all everything out, but never taking time to recharge your batteries, like eventually you're going to run dry, right? So it's like, I want you to think about just in terms of, you know, sleep and recovery, everything like that, where your body needs that. It truly does, you know, injuries, illnesses, everything like that, the recovery aspect, that's what's going to help you truly, truly get faster, better results, you know, hands down, just hear me out. So think about it like this. If you're not recovering and taking that time, your body's natural stress hormone, cortisol, is gonna be spiked. It is very, very difficult to lose body fat, to help its metabolic system, right, adapt when it's underneath all this stress. All your body wants to do at that point when it's underneath all this you know, high amounts of cortisol is just lower down the cortisol. So it's not focused on doing all these other aspects of you know losing body fat and doing this and helping you improve here and X, Y, Z. It's focused on just lowering the cortisol levels down. And how do you, can you do that the best way possible is by one, sleeping more, recovering more. Don't put yourself in that situation where you're making it 10 times harder for yourself to speed up its metabolism. You're making it 10 times harder for yourself to overall lose body fat just because you're not prioritizing the recovery aspect. You're not prioritizing the sleep. So make sure that if you focus on just doing these five easy, easy key tips here, right? You will speed up your metabolism. You will lose more body fat. And remember, they're simple things. They're habits that you can easily incorporate into your own lifestyle. Move your body more. Focus on some strength training. Hit your nutritional goals. Drink more water. And obviously, sleep more and prioritize that recovery. Hopefully that presentation was valuable for you. I put a lot of time and energy into creating it for you just to simplify things and make it very easy to understand when it comes to losing body fat and how your metabolism works. That's why at Heartletics, our main focus is helping create better, easier habits that you can easily do because these habits fit in best with your lifestyle. But most importantly, they're on track with helping you get one step closer to your goals. So hopefully you enjoyed today's presentation. And until next time, I'll talk to you. Peace out, Girl Scouts.